What's up guys, Paparazzi talking ball cards. Uh, got a different kind of video for you guys today. Um, if you've ever thought about consigning cards to Greg Morris cards, uh, then this is gonna be a fun video for you. So gonna start it off by showing you guys uh, uh, the third consignment that I am sending off to Greg Morris cards. And then after I show you what this third consignment looks like, I'm not gonna show you all the cards because it's a, it's a shitload. Um, then I'm gonna go onto uh, my laptop and show you guys um, how my first two consignments with Greg Morris went. Um, so yeah, in general, before I you know roll the cards here, in general, I really like Greg Morris. They're fast, they're responsive, um, and the, the platform that they have online that I'll show you is really cool, easy to use, easy to understand, um, and just uh, anyways. It's been a good process. That's why I'm sending a third consignment to them. Um, and uh, the, the cards do well. It's really surprising. And um, when I show you guys on the computer uh, the breakdown of, you know, how some of the sales have went, I think you guys will be surprised um, at how some of the cards have sold. So, like I said, let's get into it. Um, this is uh, a, you know, high-level breakdown of my third consignment to Greg Morris cards. I, I do leave some of the cards in top loaders. Um, I do I do that with the nicer cards. You guys might laugh and think, well, these aren't these aren't very nice. But um, I I try to throw these into top loaders if I think they're going to sell for more than twenty bucks. So we'll see. Um, oldest to newest. This is I, I just thought this was a sharp card, um, a sharp forty eight Bowman, um, fifty five Rizzuto. I don't think it'll grade out because it looks like it's miscut. Um, Charlie Neal, Cepeda, high number McCovey, high number Ron Hunt, rookie, 63, Jackie Smith. Got a lot of football on here, mostly baseball. Uh, leaders card there, OPG leaders card, Marichal, Unitas, Larry Brown, rookie, another Unitas, some Nolan Ryans. This is not, <laughs> this is the uh, Fleer Decade of Excellence. I, I don't even know where I got these things. I just found them in my closet. I looked online. The PSA 10 of this sells for like uh, sells for like 250, 350 bucks. So I'm not going to grade it. But um, Greg Morris, obviously, they grade the cards themselves and then they list them. Um, yeah, and if you guys aren't familiar with, with who Greg Morris is, check them out on eBay. Um, they're they're like the most reliable, dependable um, place to buy raw cards, especially raw vintage. They do a, a they do a really good job of basically inspecting the cards, hand grading them, and then kicking out the ones that have issues. Um, they, they catch a lot of issues. So um, one thing you'll see, I put all these, I put them into the little team bags or graded card sleeves. Um, so this is some stuff from the 50s. Uh, nice 51 lemon, but look on the back. Um, I, I got these a long time ago and they all have this kind of like glue on the back. So they will list these as poor slash fillers. Um, I just, after thinking about it, you know, I just don't really have a place for them in my in my uh, in my collection. So picked that up recently. All right, some of the fifties. So this is how I bag them, just so they it's easier for the guys. Um, like I said, they hand grade all these cards. God bless them. Um, takes a lot of time. I know it does. So. Anyways, um, got some 53s, 54, absolute beater 55 Bowman K-Line, bunch of, uh, bunch of nice 55s. I did a, uh, I bought a box off of, uh, what's it called? Sports Cards Net or sportscards.com. And uh, it had a bunch of 55s. It was a set break. Here's a Groth. Uh, George Kell. So I do, I do put some Hall of Famers in here and some nice stuff. Um, this one has a huge wrinkle for the moose. Uh, I do put some nice stuff in here and some Hall of Fame cards in here, but I, I kind of put the ones that I don't think are worthy of grading. Um, like this is a nice 59 mass, but it's got some like, uh, it's got some waxing on the front that wouldn't quite rub off. Um, so I like to send them a lot of Hall of Fame stuff. They're the Hall of Fame stuff does well. Also, Vintage Commons do exceptionally well with them, guys. So if, you have, if you're sit sitting on a bunch of Vintage Commons that are, especially if they're sharp, send them to Greg Morris, guys. Um, 
like I said, they do they do a really good job. Uh, okay, 60 banks. I mean, beat to hell. Not going to grade that, but, um, you know, um, these are just cards that I've accumulated. And, uh, like I said, didn't quite meet my, my threshold for either staying in my collection or grading. And so, you know, I think I mentioned in a previous video, I am going to the national. And so, um, you know, I want to start saving some money to be able to make the national worth it and uh, make some purchases. So, you know, this is a, a great way to, if you have cards that are a little nice 68 Tony Oliva, uh, recent inductee into the hall. Um, yeah, if you have a bunch of cards that aren't, you know, front and center, <laughs> these are these obviously are not nice condition commons, but these are actually uh, Venezuela blackbacks. A um, few of these embossed cards. Anyways, um, if you have some cards that aren't front and center in your collection, why the hell not? Uh, okay, so that's all the 60s. Figured I'd show you guys the 70s as well. Why not sell them, get some money, and uh, and then uh, put it into some nice higher end stuff? At least that's kind of my thought process, guys. Um, get rid of some of these low, lower dollar cards that are just kind of, uh, this is a cool one, uh, 1970 young Nolan Ryan here, Mets winning, um, buy some, buy some nice cards that don't take up a ton of space, got a bunch of these 71 Munch Munsons, I thought I had three, I guess I only have two, Concepcion rookies, Bly 11, bunch of 71 tops. Um, these are these are sharper tops um, commons, so not sure how these are gonna do. Um, and th this is kind of typical for what I send them, guys. And when I show you, when I show you on the computer, and by the way, feel free to fast forward if if you're not interested in uh, <laughs> if you're not interested in seeing this the the breakdown of what's going. Um, I think you guys will be surprised how well some of these do. As you'll as you see, kind of the theme here is most of what I buy is Hall of Fame. Um, but yeah, Greg Morris been very cool to work with. Some, another Munson, a rookie there, some seventy fives, a mini. <laughs> um, this, okay, uh, that's what I was getting to. This is a little different, guys. Normally, I usually stop at the 70s or 60s. This time, I included quite a bit of 70s, and I'm doing some 80s. So I'm sending in some 80s uh, rookies and things like that. So I have no idea how those are going to do. And this channel doesn't really focus a lot on the 80s. So I'll just show you guys. Um, I'll show you guys what I'm sending, but just at a high level. So in here, you know, I have a couple Ricky rookies, um, 46 cards, one of two. Um, yeah, like I said, a lot of Hall of Famers, if you're gonna send them stuff from the 80s, um, their expectation, and they give you some guidelines on their website, their expectation is that it's sharp stuff or key cards like this. I mean, the, the, the Ricky doesn't exactly have to be, um, you know, a sharp card or anything for them to consign it, but they don't want the junk really. Um, here's the second one of 80, so some, just a bunch of Hall of Famers. Uh, like I said, I have no idea how those are gonna do because that's the first time I'm sending those in. I did a set break on some 81 Fleer, so these are all Hall of Famers. 81 Don Russ, all Hall of Famers. Um, let's see what else I wanna show you. Sending in some tall, I have some 65 uh, football tall boys, some 69 basketball back here. Um, let's see, what else is going? Um, I, I got some Jeter, some uh, Louis Gonzalez rookies, some Jeter rookies. I got some assorted, assorted basketball. Um, you know, some Dr. J stuff, some Kareem Abdul-Jabbar cards. And then I got some I got some 60s football. I'll show you guys that real quick. 
Adderley, um, Abita Hell Namath, Bob Lilly, Tarkenton, Charlie Taylor, Dick, uh, Dick Blaine, Gabriel. So again, um, some Hall of Fame stuff. Yeah, my cutoff is normally if I think I if I think I could grade it and it'll be end up it'll end up being worth more than fifty bucks. I usually hold on to it and just wait till I get a good opportunity to grade it. At least that's kind of my mind mentality right now. Um, cool. Let's see. Also had some also sitting in some seventies, uh, some seventies football, some eighties football. And okay, anything else that I wanted to show you guys? No, I think that's it. So that's kind of a walkthrough of what I'm sending in for this third consignment. Now let's go ahead and jump to the laptop. Okay, so before jumping into the website, I wanted to give you guys a quick little tour of the, um, the agreement. So this is what the consignment agreement looks like with Greg Morris. Um, and before... Uh, you know, before I get too far into this, I wanted to make sure that I clearly tell everyone that if you guys want to consign with Greg Morris, you need to reach out to them through the website. Um, so you can't just pack things up and ship them to them. OK, uh, you have to get get clearance through Greg Morris's website. Tell them what you're going to send, especially if it's your first consignment, and then they'll give you this agreement. You'll sign it yourself, but just wanted to share this for information's sake for you guys to give you an idea of what their expectations are and how their fees work, okay? So the rates. Um, for raw cards, they charge 25% of the total sale value plus 50 cents for every card that sells for less than $10, and so... Um, if that doesn't make immediate sense, don't worry. We're going to uh, get into uh, some of the numbers on the website, um, and that's how it works for all their all their raw cards. Okay, this is their table for graded cards and their current fees. Um, please again uh, reach out to them uh, prior to making any consignment efforts and and see if any of these things have been updated. I signed this agreement back on June first of twenty twenty one. Okay. Um, here's some information about how they, they handled their payments. Um, they send you about 75% um, of a few weeks after the first auction closing, and then they hold off on the last 25% for a bit. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to show you. Um, okay, yeah, so here are some of the notes. Uh, for graded cards, they expect them to be worth $20 or more, um, and they only will uh, consign major card grading companies' um, cards. So raw cards, okay, um, let's see. Here we go. Uh, all standard cards and insert cards from all years up through 1975. Um, and so basically, you know, Greg Morris, they, they like vintage, um, as you can see here from this language. Looks like 1986 Fleer Basketball is cool. Uh, cards with any Hall of Fame players or rookie cards, 1976 through 85. For cards newer than 1985, they ask that you inquire with them. Okay. Um, and then the total anticipated sales should be $1,500 or higher for your consignment as a whole. Okay. Um, let's see. So they don't do any oddball size cards or anything like that. Um, and then they give you some guidelines on condition for what's okay. All right. So anything older than 1952, any condition 53 through 56, uh, commons, they want VG or VG EX or better. And then anything hall of fame or rookie is fine. 57 through 69. They want the commons to be EX to EX mint or better. Um, and then again, Hall of Fame or rookie cards in any condition is okay. So then uh, for 70 through 72, near mint or better, um, again, for commons. And then Hall of Fame or rookie again in any condition. So bottom line here, if you have Hall of Fame or rookie cards, uh, those are okay basically in any condition. Uh, same kind of story here. 86 player basketball, they want things to be in good shape if they're commons. Uh, again, the mega stars, any condition is fine. Um, then they talk about uh, Hall of Fame and rookie cards from 76 to 85. They expect those to be EX to EX Mint or better. Okay, so a lot to kind of consider there, but uh, I, I every time I could sign with them, uh, again, this is my third time, I always refresh myself on these uh, guidelines. Okay, um, this is, you know, there's another page that shows you the address, but I'm not going to show you that again because if you guys are interested, please reach out to them, okay? Let's check out the website. 
really good website, gregmorriscards.com. Um, it, it, for me, at least my understanding is that for the most part, they set this up for the consignees. So if you send in cards, so consigner login or the consigners, uh, consigner login, nice little portal. Here is, uh, they, they, they take you to this first page as your activity for the, um, the last 90 days. But let's go to detail view. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little. Well, I want to zoom in a little bit. Okay, cool. So these are the two consignments that I've done. Okay, I did one back in January of 2021. And then I did another one more recently in November. Okay, so uh, let's walk through this kind of at a high level. The one I did in January had 656 cards um, as as they sold on eBay. So the final action, the final auction values summed up on eBay to be three thousand nine hundred sixty dollars. Um, and then this fees here, uh, one thousand two hundred sixty six dollars. That's their twenty five percent. OK, so um, again, that's twenty five percent flat if the card sells over ten dollars. And then if it sells under, if it sells under, I'm sorry, 25% flat <laughs> for cards over 10. And then if it's under $10, the final sale price, it's 25% plus 50 cents. Okay. So the net to me for that first consignment was 2,700 bucks. And then they sent me the first payment on the uh, 23rd of February. So if you take a look, guys, I mean, this is pretty quick. They received this and processed, started processing on the 29th of January. And I got the first payment in about, you know, three weeks uh, from that date. And the first payment, again, was pretty substantial. It was a, a majority of the funds that they owed me. Okay. And then about a month later, they sent me uh, another um I can't remember. I think they were using PayPal at the time. So they sent me another PayPal for 960 bucks. Now they're using ACH, guys. So now they send money straight to your checking account. All right. Um, and they still owe me $36. And then um, anyways, so this other one I did more recently, this was um, this was much less cards, uh, only 288 cards, but they were nicer. OK, um, sold for twenty five hundred. They took out seven twenty seven in fees. Uh, the net to me was seventeen fifty. Okay, and then you'll see again here similar kind of payments. You know the big the big payment comes first, and then there's a remainder that you get. So let's take a look at this most uh, some of the results from this most recent auction I did um, or consignment lot. Okay. So um, first thing, if you go into the detail view, uh, this is that, the detail view. Right now, I don't have any cards active because they've all sold. So let's remove the filter. And then uh, one of the things you could do is you, you can... Uh, you can change the dates here on all of these fields, okay? So you can uh, search by the date. So if you set it up this way, the oldest first, you'll see all, you know, you'll see the oldest cards I sent to them. And you'll see their description that they used in eBay. So this was a, you know, low-grade, creased uh, 1948 Bowman. Um, you could see a low-res version of the card. Obviously, this card was a beater. Uh, it got... it. The auction ended on the 3rd of December. It got seven bids, sold for $7, so less than 10. So the fee was $2.34 there. So that's 25% plus 50 cents. And so I netted $5 there, okay? Uh, status is sold. Here's a slightly nicer card here, right? 49 Bowman uh, Eddie Yost. That card, uh, that was a nice one. It had nine bids, sold for 20 bucks. And so the fee there was just a flat 25%. Okay, so my proceeds was 1538. Um, okay, now I just want to show you some of the highlights. So let's clear this filter. And then I want to show you which one sold with the highest price. Um, and so, you know, I was kind of stunned at some of these cards, and I've been really bad at predicting which ones would sell the best. Uh, this is a 1958 Ernie Banks that I gave them. Um, definitely has a good amount of wear on this Banks card, and it's com considerably off-center. But it got 16 bids, sold for 66 bucks, and that netted about 50 bucks to me. Um, so pretty, pretty good sale there. This is another stunner, guys. 1959 tops. 
Destruction Crew EX EX Mint. Um, this card got super pumped up because it was selling on eBay at the exact time that Minnie Minoso was nominated into the Hall of Fame. So I just had, I got lucky here. This is good timing. Obviously, Larry Doby is a Hall of Famer as well, but I got really lucky with this card. Um, sold for 56 bucks, man. Um, pretty incredible. Uh, th this Pee Wee Reese, this was, this was a real beater. It had paper loss on the back. I was still stunned. It sold for 45 bucks. Um, I had a I had a Monty Irvin with a little bit of staining down here. Didn't think that would do so well. It sold for $43. Um, I asked them, I had these, you know, off-brand kind of these uh, rapid kernels, <laughs> trout rookies. And so I, I thought it would sell for 10 bucks. Sold for $42. Uh, had a uh, Duke Snyder, um, Al Kaline. Anyways, this, this is all, these are all the sold listings, guys. Um, and, you know, this is just a fantastic interface. If you want to see the actual auction, you could click on it. It takes you to the auction on eBay. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's, uh, okay. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to show you guys. Anyways, I really hope this was helpful. Um, and, oh, the only other thing I'd mention is that obviously, um, if you have cards that are active, you can monitor your active cards by using this filter. Um, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to show you guys. They also reject cards, okay? So um, for whatever reason, they, they rejected this 1951 Bowman, Mickey Vernon, and this 1961 Fleer uh, Herb Pennock. And I, they reject for a number of reasons. Um, they re reject if it's minimum size, if it doesn't meet the minimum size requirement, if they think it's trimmed, if they think it's altered. So they will reject some cards and ship them back to you. Um, and likely they will charge for shipping. Uh, but anyways, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, moral of the story here, Greg Morris Cards is really cool to work with. It's been a pleasure. Um, and I will give you guys an update after that third consignment goes in and uh, give you guys some numbers on that. Let me know what you guys think about Greg Morris, or uh, please share if you guys have, uh, you know, had a good experience with them. Anyways, uh, until next time, Paparazzi talking ball cards out of here.